that's his thing, and that's why the UFC likes him. The UFC keeps him has kept him around because he he fights the way Dana wants all of us to fight. Like just go out there and kill or be killed. That's what Dana wants. The All Star app, the number one app in the business. UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. I just want to get your thoughts on uh, Power Slap League, man. We've been seeing the, we've been seeing the highlights, right? And I didn't expect to see such vicious knockouts. I didn't expect that. And, and now it's all over the internet. People are going crazy. Like, what are your thoughts on this this league? The they've got the wrong name. Like, I wasn't super interested when it first got, uh, like, shown. But they're not slapping each other. They are, they're open palm striking each other to the jaw. Like, I don't know. It's not something I would ever do or ever be interested in. But that's also how a lot of people feel about fighting. So I try not to hate on it. I don't really like it. And I don't think it's a good look to be, like, associated with the UFC. But... I try not to hate on it because because people, you know, felt the same way about MMA not too long ago. You're right. You're right. They people still feel the same way about MMA to this day. Exactly what uh people are criticizing the slap league for. Yeah, man. It's it's. I have mixed feelings to be honest with you about it. You know what I mean? Because everybody loves watching knockouts, but then they're always talking about the defense. Like you're not allowed to defend yeah. yourself. The, re- the reason a knockout is cool is because it's hard to get. Like, mm-hmm. like look at how many fights don't end in knockouts. It's because it's hard to get a knockout. Yeah. If someone just stands there and lets lets me wind up and hit him as hard as I can, that's not that hard. Yeah, it's wild, man. It's wild. Um, now, you, you know, you stay in Colorado. It's winter. Mm-hmm. And I was peeping out some of the videos that you po- posted about ice baths outside. Mm-hmm. And I can understand the summer ice baths outside, <laughs> but then... How do you handle the ones in the winter, man? It's like snowing and the, it's minus zero. Yeah, it's cold. It's cold, but that that's the whole point, you know. It, it sucks and uh, the tub doesn't have to – the water doesn't have to be as cold as like a lot of people who post videos make it be as far as like the science is concerned. But, you know, it, it makes me feel tougher when the water is 35 degrees and, and I get in there and it makes it easier to just – I just have a horse trough in the backyard and – uh the water gets plenty cold. I don't have like a, a ten thousand dollar cold plunge like like some of these celebrities do. Well, I guess that's the perks of living in uh in Colorado, right? Up in the mountains. Yeah, exactly. You gotta use use what nature gives you. That's the whole point. For sure. And like when you do it in the morning, you know, I've never done ice baths in the morning, but what does that do to you, like personally? Like does it get you kick started real good or what does it do? Yeah, so it wakes me up. It, it definitely wakes me up in the morning and, and gets me moving. But uh, the like psychological aspect of it is is I start my day by doing something that I absolutely don't want to do. Every piece of my body, I try and come up with so many different excuses about why uh, we did it yesterday. We don't need to do it today. Oh, it's too cold. It's probably actually not healthy. But I just shove that all aside and I do it. And so that's the first thing I, I start every day with is by forcing myself to do something I don't want to do. And just it just snowballs after that. Yeah, it seems like uh, a lot of people need that in their life. I need it, man. I need I, I don't know how I'll do it, but I think I everyone, need it. Does. Ev- yeah. everyone does. Everyone does. <laughs> um, you're back in action, man. February 18th. You're facing off against Jordan Wright. Just wanted to get your thoughts on him and, and the style that he brings. Yeah, he's not very. He's more of like what I would call a traditional martial artist. He's high kicks, wild kicks, and the dude brings it. Like it's a dangerous fight, is because he just comes out guns blazing. I think all his fights are finished, either him getting finished or finishing his opponent. He's ne- literally in his whole career never seen a judge's scorecard. So that you know, that's something I have to adapt to and, and be prepared for. Be prepared for a guy that's you know gonna live or die in the ring and it's it's an exciting prospect for me yeah yeah exactly man i think a lot of people fans will look at the matchup and see that 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 right is killer be killed and and reckless at yeah. many times throughout the fight and i i believe that that leaves openings for his opponents and a lot of his opponents have allowed have been able to capitalize on that and do you see that do, when you watch his film do you see a lot of like just openings for you yeah, so I, I do see, you know, if I 
I like this fight. There's a reason I, I said yes to it. Like, if I stick to my game plan, if I do what I'm always trying to do, it, it leads to a victory. I'm trying to push guys against the cage, grind them out, you know, smash people. And that is the perfect answer for a guy that's just coming out winging wild kicks, winging cr crazy techniques. So, you know, it should be a really good fight, and it's a really good uh, stylistic matchup for both of them. So it's safe to say you're not out there to get fight of the night. No, no. <laughs> that's one thing you never want fight of the night no, like no. The, the 50k is cool but you don't actually want fight of the night because that means you you if you won or lost you got your ass kicked like you don't want fight of the night i want performance bonuses that's what i want yeah and, and the goal is to also return as soon as possible right so you could make another paycheck yeah exactly in in, in especially in my you know situation fresh ufc debut on a bigger, a long contract because I came off the ultimate fighter. I'm trying to burn this contract out. I'm trying to fight four, hopefully four or five times this year. So, you know, you don't do that breaking your hand or, or hurting your heel going crazy in, in the first round. Another aspect of this fight as well is he's moving back up to 205. And the last time he fought there was in his UFC debut. That's a 20 pound difference. It's a huge difference, you know what I mean? Especially in, in fighting. How much do you think that will be a factor when, when the door closes, the cage door closes? So it's going to be just because of who he is, right? It's going to be a, it's going to be a big deal because I'm coming down from heavyweight. I fought for heavyweight all last year. And usually the guy coming up, you know, they're faster. They have better cardio. But cardio has kind of been an issue of his. And, and maybe he's hoping without cutting weight, his gas tank will be better. But, um, you know, we'll see. He's never seen a third round. So it's not like I'm super worried about him dragging me to deep water areas and all this stuff. He's going to be fast and he's going to come hard. Um, but he's definitely going to feel the weight. He's going to feel someone that was 250 pounds two months ago, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. You, you mentioned it. And, you know, you're back at your original weight. But the heavyweight lifestyle, how, how mm -hmm. nice was that, though, for that year? <laughs> It was great. It was great for a year. I couldn't, I couldn't have done the show at light heavyweight. I couldn't have made two Oh five tw twice in three weeks. Uh, just cause I do cut a sizable amount of weight, but it was nice to get three guaranteed fights with no weight cut and just, just enjoy myself a little bit. But back home, I'm back in my division where I belong, where I, where I, you know, plan to win a championship. So everything worked out the way it's supposed to. What do you tweak though? Like, you know, since you are going back down to your, your original weight, what do you tweak in your diet or maybe in your conditioning to allow yourself to taper down so you don't have any concerns when it gets close to weigh-ins? It, it's all uh, volume, the amount of food. I always try and eat clean. I always try and eat good and clean, but, uh, you know, I'm Samoan. I like to eat a lot of food. I, I go from probably eating, you know, 10,000 calories a day to 3,000, which 3,000 is still a lot. That's still plenty to get, you know, uh, get you enough energy to get through the day but it's not what i was eating when i was a heavyweight top 30 man the finale you know you suffered your first loss as a professional mm -hmm. how were you physically and, and mentally the weeks following that fight you know it was it was rough just losing in general and, and losing that way more often is what i would say i probably could have sat with it better if he had come out and just smoked me or ragdolled me or, or you know done anything other than just blast me with a punch that I didn't even get to react to. But that was, you know, it was my fault. I had my hands down. I was boxing with my hands down, trying to feel myself a little bit too much. And I just had to get back to the drawing board. I, I, I've never lost in fighting. I had never lost in fighting before, but I've had a long athletic career. Like I've had many, I've taken many L's in my time. And there's only one answer when you lose. And that's to get back to the training room, get back to watching tape. And just get better and and that's what i've really dedicated myself to and you know i'm a thousand times better today than i was in in the cage on august 9th when you go back and reflect on that whole experience you mentioned that you you've learned from it but what were the you know i guess the deep more detailed like lessons learned from that whole experience not even just like yeah. losing but just like going through the fight week and everything you know the big thing is is this is the ufc everyone here is good it like people I, I try not to read the comments, but people are even writing this fight off because Jordan's had a few losses. Everyone, if you're in the UFC, you're a good fighter. 
and I knew Muhammad personally, and we had lived together in the house. We were roommates in the house. We trained together forever, and I kind of just, you know, I trained hard for the fight, but I didn't go in with that fear that you need. You need a little bit of fear that this guy could put my lights out at any second, and I didn't have that in uh, when I fought Muhammad, and you know, it makes a difference. It makes a difference in your sharpness, in, in how you are reacting, and how you're Everyone deserves enough. You don't can't respect them too much, but you have to understand to get to this point, to be in the UFC, all of these guys have the capability of winning fights. And uh, that's not really how I approached the fight with Muhammad. And, you know, he taught me a valuable lesson that, that all these guys are good fighters. If you're in the UFC, you're a top 1% of fighters on the planet. No doubt. And training camp, man, Team Elevation, I spoke with uh, one of your close training partners, Devin Clark last week or the week nice. before and he has a fight coming up as well you guys are in camp together you know who else is in the room with you guys just grinding and, and helping out so our, our like immediate circle with the big guys is me Devin, uh curtis blades uh we've been tying in vanilla thunder he's the guy in the lfa on the come up um uh we don't really train together because they're um smaller but kamaro and gaichi just came back to the training room because they they've got their fights signed for for march so you know it's a good room it's a good room anything different you're doing for this camp you know from from all the like experience that you've had the last couple of years yeah i wouldn't say different necessarily getting back to what i do as a as a light heavyweight you know a little bit more road work more cardio more running just to manage the weight and to fight at a different pace, you know, light heavyweights fight at different pace and Jordan Wright is, is an 85 er So just preparing myself for the pace of a, of a smaller opponent. Um, yeah, that, that's just about it. Say this, the training always pretty much stays the same, but I have added in some, some road work, some like old school, traditional, just running on the road. It seems like you take conditioning real, real seriously, man. How, how important is that? to be able to weaponize something like that in the cage. Yeah. It's the it's literally the most important aspect of fighting. And you can ask anyone that that's an actual fighter about it. You can ask them, would you do you want to be the hardest hitter in the room? Do you want to be like have the slickest skills in the room or do you just want to have the best cardio in the room? If they're a real fighter, have actually been in the cage, everyone is going to say they want to have the best cardio. Cuz there's I've been in fights. I've been in fights where you're in the third round and you're like I cannot shoot a takedown because I'll I won't be able to get up if I if it gets stuffed. So we gotta figure something else out. And it's the worst, it's the worst feeling in the world. And and coming from football, it's totally different. It's opposite. Football, you come out, you get a rest, you only go real hard when the when your number gets called, when it's your play for you. Fighting's the opposite. If I see you're tired, if I see you're tired, I'm just gonna put it to you immediately. I'm really gonna immediately pounce on you the second I see you getting tired. Yeah, in football, you have substitutions fighting. You don't have substitutions. Yeah. There's yeah. no substitute. I, yeah, you you have a big run in football. You can go sit for 10 minutes. You can yeah. go sit and rest for 10 minutes before you go back in. Yeah, for sure. And and I think a lot of people don't realize how hard it is to like continually defend yourself for five minutes. Just even one round, mm -hmm. not even three. Yeah. Just one round, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, those arms and, and shoulders and... They get heavy, man, after a while. Any, yeah, anytime you see someone in the cage doing something that they're not supposed to or, or guy's not keeping his hands up or guy's not defending a takedown right and, and you are sitting on the couch like, why can't this guy defend takedowns? It's because he's tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because he's physically exhausted and can't lift his arms up anymore. Yeah, and I feel like this, that is going to be a big key in this fight as well, you know, coming up. How do you envision uh, this fight playing out against Jordan Wright? So he's going to come out hard. He's going to come out hard. This he, He's just being honest about it. He's fighting for his job, right? I think he's on a three-fight skid. He's going to come out and try and impress Dana. And it's my job to not let that happen. And I don't, I don't know if that's going to be through him either just blitzing me or him skirting the outside looking for a big kick, big head kick. But either way, it's the same answer for me. You know, I'm trying to put my forehead right in his chest and push him up to the cage and, and do work from there. And I'm sure he's working on his cardio, but that's not just something that happens in, in two months. You know, that's a lifetime of, of commitment to to getting your cardio to being fight ready. So, you know, that's how I see it going. You're right about, you know, he is kind of having his back against the wall. So he could 
come out hesitant. You don't know until you actually yeah. step in there. But most likely, he's going to come out there and try to entertain. That's it's, it's like in his DNA. And that's his thing. That's his thing, and that's why the UFC likes him. The UFC keeps him has kept him around because he he fights the way Dana wants all of us to fight. Like just go out there and kill or be killed. That's what Dana wants. February 18th, UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas. Zach, thank you so much, man, for the time and all the best in this fight. This is an exciting matchup, and I'm interested to see how this this one plays out. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me on.